For me, the motorcycle was a means of escape. It wasn't a kind of going out for a lovely ride or something. It was my route to freedom and just getting away from everything I hated. I was racing motorcycles and I met my first husband who was also a motorcycle racer. He had this huge accident and, and, and I went, of course, so I followed the ambulance to the hospital, but he died quite, quite quickly. Um, he did, he, yeah, so I didn't get to talk to him. I feel the guilt is, is about Tom. Was there something else I should have done to stop that happening to him? Could I have stopped him actually racing? Could I have stopped him um, dying? I didn't know how to sit down and say, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to feel terrible. I'm just going to feel really bad. So I thought the way to deal with that was to be really, really busy and create something else. I got very involved then in motorcycle racing safety. That's how we began Riders for Health, building an organisation, as it were, against the odds, against sort of pushing against the tide of things, um, takes a lot out of you makes you tired, makes you frustrated. In that circumstance, you're not effective to, your, to yourself, your family, or your organization. At the end of 2015, an organization from the United States um, was encouraged by one of the social enterprise organizations to offer to take over Riders for Health. So I was asked, I was asked to leave. I found it really humiliating. I felt really kind of ashamed of having l allowed something like that to happen. I, I kept on kind of reviewing what I should have done, what could I have done, and what could I have done differently. It was very messy and very painful. You hear people say, you must listen to your body, it will tell you what you need. Well, it's the last thing I was doing, was listening to myself. I wasn't saying, oh, I feel bad, so I must stop. I felt so bad that I thought, Some, this, maybe this is something that would help. I didn't know whether it would, but I knew, knew I needed something. And that was when the well-being invitation or application came along. I had terrible kind of terrible, serious anxiety. And I thought, I don't really understand what well-being is, but if I can learn how to manage anxiety, how to manage myself, how to manage my kind of insides, it would be a, it would be a wonderful thing, because at the moment I'm not managing. So I think I learned the language of well-being. And then once you learn the language of well-being, you, you think about what those words mean. And so I, I, I learned to feel more that I could be important to other people in a way that I didn't think I could before. And I feel much stronger myself. I feel consciously more stronger. And I feel I have some tools to help me when I'm feeling really vulnerable. I feel stronger and I feel more respectful of myself. I think the well-being program has helped me to be more helpful to other people because I, I'm more honest with myself and not frightened of telling people about the mistakes I've made. I think well-being for me is to feel it's okay to take less responsibility without feeling guilty that I'm taking less responsibility and to allow myself to have fun and do the things I love to do that make me feel me.